Hi there, welcome to the latest episode of my 10 minute moan and the topic of this 10 minute moan is a very peculiar press conference just held by Amir Anwar <clears throat> about his two clients who were the ones alleged with the violence we've all seen footage of at Manchester Airport over a week ago. Now, the press conference was a bit bizarre. I, I uh, was coming home in my car and I was listening to the radio and he had them talking live and the people presenting the news had no prior experience of any anything like this before. It was very, but I could see when I was sorry what I was listening to and then when I came home and watched the video back, very Americanized way where defendants would go and make public statements like this. And I think the only reason he's able to do that is his clients have not been charged with any crime. Therefore, there's no contempt of court because contempt of court only starts when someone is charged. That is what happens in Scotland. I am assuming and stand, may stand corrected that that is the same in England. Now, when I came home, put the video on. It was a full live coverage, so there was about 10 minutes of an empty room. Then the lawyer and his clients came in to join him at the table. And there was this bizarre thing where he, he spoke about, you know, introduced everybody, told people how the, the, the conference was going to proceed. Then he started getting really arrogant with his staff. It appeared that he didn't have some, um, you know, one of these, what do you call it, you put your papers in, the clear films that you can put in here. Put a pouch, that's the thing. One of those clear pouches with his speech and some photographs that he was wanting to go through. And he was a bit ratty and he was banging the table and stuff like that. And he was like, make sure those are here for the end of the conference and stuff. And I thought, oof. He seemed like a nice guy. Anyway, he went on uh, in his pre-prepared speech to have a go at the IOPC. That's the uh, independent police complaints body who he has uh, assured us are dealing with a complaint about the conduct of the officers. And he claimed that they were prejudiced and the, um, he said that he wanted them to carry out their investigation without interference but suggested there was deliberate interference, which is quite some claim, and claimed that the IOPC were in some way smearing the family. Massive claims on this independent police body. He also claimed that the family had been victims of hate crimes since the incident and the footage came apart. And he's claimed that the Greater Manchester Police have had no attempt whatsoever to investigate these things. Again, a massive claim. And he then accused, this was a, an amazing um, thing for a lawyer to say publicly, he accused the Greater Manchester Police of manipulating the media. Massive claim again. One of the, what he tried to explain was a build up to it. And he suggested that on the flight, the mother was verbally, racially abused by a passenger on a plane, Qatari flight, into Manchester. And I thought, the words that he used, I wouldn't repeat, but they started with a P. And bitch, that was another claim, sorry. And he um, suggests that the, the passenger in the seat behind the mother started verbally abusing her. She then went to the back of the plane to try and get into a spare seat, and the staff told her that she had to move because that seat was allocated to somebody else. The only bit of, I'm struggling with this bit because I would imagine Qatari Airlines are used to having passengers of the mother's um, identity and persuasion. I find it quite bizarre that a Qatari owned national carrier would simply ignore claims of racism on the flight. I would have assumed that if such claimed seven hours of constant uh, verbal racist abuse was to take part in a plane, then the person accused of this racist abuse would probably be met by a police officer on their arrival at Manchester. That obviously wasn't the case because he described what happened next. He said that when the mother came off the plane, she was then further abused physically by this guy in the 
baggage area where he was hitting her, uh, the hand luggage from behind. Which again is a big claim and you would think that area would have a lot of people actively watching the passengers at this point and there would be plenty of police and security in that sort of area. But this is the first we've heard of these claims. And he said that the when she retrieved her bag, went through to meet her sons and the air, sorry, the um, the publicly accessed areas, which would be after passport control and stuff. The claim is that the guy who was making the alleged racist comments on the plane was sitting having a coffee in Starbucks, and. Apparently, the, there was a sort of some sort of altercation between them at this point, which again must have happened in full view of loads of security, loads of CCTV, and I would imagine police officers wouldn't have been far from it. So these are the claims that were made and what led up to it. And then there's a missing bit because at the press conference, we're led to believe it went from that until the guy was at the ticket office. And then we've all seen the video footage of that when the boys were trying to get their ticket and there was an attempt made to arrest them where there was a bit of violence on both sides, if I'm perfectly honest with you, which led to three police officers being assaulted. Sorry, four police officers being assaulted. Three of them needing hospital um, treatment. One with a broken nose, who was a female. And we've both seen, we've all seen the photographs and the videos of both female officers put to the deck by blows from the younger brother. So, what happened next? He alleged that the police officer arresting one of the brothers threatened to kill him, handcuffed him, put his head down towards his knees and frog marched him out of the building and away from everyone else where he continued to threaten and abuse the brother. That's quite an allegation as well. Claims that the, uh, the family have... Uh, including cops in the family, by the way, have been harassed and victimised. Now, I'm unaware of any other family members bar these three, and I'm, I'm imagining that's the same with the majority of the public. Nobody knows the identification of the cops, and they, say, they suggest that there's several cops, not only in Greater Manchester Police, but in the wider police in, uh, in, in England, where they have many family members who are cops, and indeed one of the brothers is trying to be a cop, and the claim is that even the cops are being harassed and victimised. And I wonder who they suggest are harassing and victimising them. Um, he, he was asked, when it, when it went to open questions at this point, one of the journalists asked for them to explain a bit more about what happened at Starbucks. And he refused to do so, saying that it was part of a current live investigation, which I thought was rather bizarre, because everything that he spoke about and was happy to discuss as part of a live police investigation. So I found that peculiar that he didn't want to talk about Starbucks. Quite happy to talk about the plane, quite happy to talk about what happened after Starbucks, but no want to talk about Starbucks at all. Um, then one of the, the, and he kept repeating that the boys had already said early on that they were sorry, right? And there was a, a great question by an independent journalist, who's a freelance journalist as he described himself. He said, um, what is it the boys are sorry for? I thought it was a great question. And obviously the lawyer refused to answer that. Which was quite funny. And then another one person asked, there was rumours going about and claims, sorry, by the old lawyer, that one of the brothers had a cyst in his brain as a result of the attack. And he was asked for an update on that. And he, all he said on that was that was still being medically investigated. Which is, I thought was a bit strange because you're already told and it's been medically uh, told that you've got a cyst, then you've got a cyst. But he didn't, he didn't want to talk about that at all. Refused to go, f you know, either, he didn't even want to admit or deny the claims about having a cyst in the head, which was a bit bizarre. And then... It was this uh, comment that was it came up since the attacks, where the police have said categorically there was three instances over a period of an hour. But what we've all saw 
is probably what 30 seconds of footage and all seems to be a bit longer when there's such a, a fracas and you know so, so many things going on at one time but the police have stated that there was three incidents not just one but three and it seems that uh, Mr Anwar wants to just concentrate on one incident which is a bit strange so we don't know we, his claim is that he's his, his, his clients didn't even know it was the police that were trying to arrest them from the back. Okay. Now, I think it's obvious that there's something happened that we've still not seen before that. The first things we footage we've seen was a head kicking, which was quite horrific. And then we've seen a wee bit more context. We've seen what happened in the lead up to that before the um, officers being uh, assaulted. But we've not seen anything since before that either. So we don't know as a public. Um... But the police have told us there's been three incidents. And Mr. Anwar didn't want to talk about them either. And I think it was very, it was obviously staged, right? But I found it very peculiar and hard to watch this guy want to tell us all these things that happened in, in some quite detail. But wouldn't want to comment on others. Like he made the claim about his um, client being dragged away from the scene to have his life threatened by a police officer and taken round to the side where he claims there was no CCTV and that's probably why he'd done that to then um, receive more abuse where his client felt he was going to die, which was quite horrific. So he was quite happy to talk about all that, but he wasn't happy to talk about what happened in the plane much because he was asked later on about, you know, so what's happening with Qatar? Are, are they, uh, have you spoke to them? And there didn't seem to be much comment made on that. I didn't want to talk about that. I didn't want to talk about any of the other incidents. I didn't want to talk about what the kids were sorry for. Then he wanted to talk about what happened to Starbucks, but was quite happy to tell us how the life of his clients was in danger and threatened. Well, there we go. What, what, an, what a start to the afternoon. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you've not already done so, please consider subscribing. But most importantly of all, unless you're people that find attacking women police officers is justifiable, everyone else. Have a great day. Cheerio bye now.